So the reasons for the delay on our spec house project are fully explained in the video spec house delay. Check it out. Let me give you an update on those two primary um, obstacles to moving forward. And the first of those is Nate's project, the storage project in Arizona. As you can see, right now it's moving forward. The boundary fence is up, almost complete, going to be grouting that next week. Security gates going in in the front, and then all of the interior work around fencing and storage units and electricity, all those sorts of things will be included on the channel and will be done pretty soon. So that obstacle is just about to sunset. The second obstacle was my mom's health. She's been in hospice for eight months, and last week my mom passed away. That has made this a difficult year. Providing care for mom was consuming, overwhelming. Learned a lot of things I never thought I would have to learn. But we're back. We're moving forward, and the first part of moving forward is implementing the changes onto the plan that came from the channel. You guys came with, I don't know, two dozen excellent suggestions about appearance and about function and about door locations and move this room. And, and we're going to use a lot of those suggestions. It's going to take our draftsman, Gary Fadness, a while to make that happen. We have engineering to take care of, and so we have some hoops to jump through that we thought we were going to jump through last winter. We've got another video where we were talking about our process of making the decision between putting this house on a crawl space or on a post-tension slab on grade. We posted that with a genuine desire to find out what you guys thought about which would be A, the one you would like to see, and B, the one we would be happiest with. And it was just so interesting because it started out just about 50-50. The first week or so, it was just pretty evenly split. And then as time went on, it seems to have skewed more 60-40 in favor of the crawl space. You know, it's really hard to tell exactly what your lives are like just from the little comments we get, but I think as I've looked over those comments and thought about what I was going to do, it appears that the guys who are professional, who do this sort of thing for a living or are around this sort of thing a lot, were more interested in the post-tension slab because it is sort of a novelty in a lot of the country. And the people who are more um, do it yourself or just watching because of general interest and a desire to know just how does a house go together. We're more interested in the more typical scenario of a crawl space. So at this point, largely driven by one or two really insightful and deliberate and well thought out emails that presented some of the benefits of a crawl space that I just hadn't even thought of. I wish I had your names, guys. There were two of you, and it would, they just they, they moved the needle for me. I think we're going with the crawl space. Now, let me just reserve the right to turn my hat around if when I get right down to value engineering this, it turns out that there's a profound cost benefit with post-tension. But at this point, we're, we're leaning heavily towards a crawl space. It feels like the criteria that is most important in this decision between post-tension slab on grade and crawl space is what is going to be the most useful for the largest number of people. So as we've processed this, we've realized that a crawl space is a more standard method in more areas. It's a process that more people would be interested in attempting themselves. It's a process that is applicable, at least in terms of the utilities and the mechanical agreements and processes would apply whether you were putting it on a full basement or on a crawl space. It is a, a process that is more familiar in areas with deeper uh, freezing, ground freezing, frost line considerations. So on balance, separate from the whole deal of do I feel like framing a floor when I framed a lot of floors versus, man, I, I would kind of like to set those cat heads and order those tendons and roll that out and be there when they're tensioned. This spec house project is not so much about me or pro more properly us, Nate and I, it's about leaving a video record of how this is done that's going to last for a long, long time. You know, an interesting thing right now is the more I talk about this to you, visualizing who it is that I'm talking to, because I'm not just talking to a Canon camera, I'm talking to a lot of people who are interested in this. And in that context, I think I almost have no choice but to do a crawl space. At least that's how it feels right now. 
because more of you are going to want to know how a mud seal goes down and how you mark those and how you drill the holes and you're going to want to know about you're going to want to know about how to install hold downs in a stem wall and how to lay out the floor joist and how the rim joist works and so I, I'm going to be surprised right now if I find any any real justification for going back to that idea of a post tension slab. We'll see. It could happen when I sit down with the actual engineering and start counting the pennies it could change but this is what I think. So it's about 6.30 in the morning right now and the sun just broke through the clouds. You can tell we're not in Roseburg anymore. This is not the Pacific Northwest. This is Mesa, Arizona. In many ways a more hostile environment in terms of the natural environment and in many ways a much more urban environment with everything that comes along with that and so this project is Nathan's. Nathan, Nate, is uh, the guy who, you know, really makes this channel happen. Nate's not really comfortable putting himself in front of the camera. He, uh, I don't know, he didn't get his dad's relentless show-off gene, I guess. So we're going to kind of introduce that slowly, but I'm not here all the time, but Nathan is filming this all the time. So there's a lot of content that's been captured here and that will digest and bring, bring forward, not near as much as a spec house for several reasons. Number one, there's not as many agreements. Number two, it's not the same kind of work at all. Number three, we're doing very little of it with our own hands. I have three boys and a daughter, and I was very careful not to turn any of them into carpenters. Because when you're right in the middle of a blue collar, uh, a blue collar career and your kids are little, all you can think about is, man, I want something better for my boys. Now, I'm not sure that was I'm not sure I was looking at that accurately because the world has changed in the last 30 years and the trades are more and more in demand and, and the, uh, the dearth of real world instruction in trade knowledge and the, the uh, cultural shift to not valuing trades and to only valuing college education is creating a new dynamic that I think is going to be hard for us as a country. But it's just so interesting that even though I did not turn Nate into a carpenter, he's turned himself into a developer. And he uses the things that he saw me do a lot. And he calls me a lot. Dad, what do you think? Should I this? Should I that? We talk about agreements and staging and sequences. And I get the opportunity every month or so now to come down here and kind of jump in with him on his project, which is a much bigger project than anything that I have ever attempted personally, Scott Wadsworth. Anyway, my boys aren't carpenters, but they get a lot of stuff done. And I'm just really pleased to be able to be engaged with this even around the edges. And I'm double pleased to be able to bring the parts of it that might be interesting to you, to you. So thanks for watching.